NASA says right now is a sublime, critical opportunity to focus on the planet Venus. This follows the recent discovery of possible life on the world. If you somehow end up exploring NASA's records from the 1960s, you'd see the space organization calling Venus a planet of judgment. Meanwhile, Mars became our primary objective. Such careful naming of the most important planets wasn't an accident during the wild space race period. The Soviet Union was focused on sending ambitious missions to Venus. The harsh planet showed surprisingly few opportunities for life, yet the Soviet space program didn't decommission the Venera program until the fall of the USSR. Thanks to Neil deGrasse Tyson, we finally understand why. Join us as we examine the declassified photos from Venus taken by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union was significant in more ways than one. Not only did it shift the global direction of the world, but the collapse of the USSR also sank numerous secrets with it. The fact that the Soviets had a huge advantage for secrets, from running the most secretive intelligence agency on the planet to being secretive about their actual capabilities regarding extraterrestrial contact, suggests that the former superpower holds numerous untold mysteries. Before the United States of America dominated most planetary ventures in space, the Soviet Union was leading the charge. While the USSR had a long history of both successful and unsuccessful space missions, its most notable focus was on the very antagonistic planet Venus. In Russian, you'd see Venus as Venera, which became the name of the mission that lasted from 1961 to 1983. During the same period, the U.S. was busy sending its missions to the moon. So, in a way, the Soviets chose to use their resources elsewhere. We can't say that the whole obsession with the second planet from our sun is odd. Did the Soviets want to use the planet's surface as a possible and highly established power base? Or were they perhaps planning to colonize the planet later, looking for any forms of life there? It's genuinely hard to say why the Soviets focused on the antagonistic planet, as they conducted these missions during the Cold War and weren't completely open about their intentions. In truth, all we know about the Venusian missions relies on declassified and archived information. Anyway, after all this, it's challenging to pinpoint what the Soviets were looking for and if they ever uncovered the secrets of Venus. The Soviets didn't land on Venus just once, or even twice, but on multiple occasions. That's at least clear. The Soviets launched 28 ambitious rockets to the striking planet, and 13 of those entered the Venusian atmosphere, while 8 actually landed. Such complex missions placed the Soviets in a leading position in space exploration. Sure, the U.S. was a close second, but NASA was more interested in satellites and creative technology than searching for life on planets. Its focus was on Mars, which, in turn, wasn't particularly surprising or troubling. Your history book might not tell you this, but the Soviet space program was the first to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet other than Earth. It also had another set of firsts on its record. The USSR became the first state to achieve a soft landing on another planet, bringing back images and sounds from the surface of that planet. In fact, the Soviets had their own one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind moment well before the U.S. So why do we rarely hear about such achievements? Recall what we said about the Soviet tendency to maintain secrets. That's just one of many explanations for the oversight of the Soviet space program. Back in 1992, the prominent organization was decommissioned in the aftermath of the USSR, and the agency had to be revived under a new Russian identity, Roscosmos. A lot of its original records were either lost or destroyed. This is precisely why we don't have a clear answer as to why the Soviets launched 28 rockets into the Venusian atmosphere. Still, we can make the most sensible guess. Perhaps the Soviet decision to explore Venus was more about cost-effectiveness than anything else. This is not to say that the space program had little knowledge about the planet's real potential. They were searching for usable water levels, sunlight radiation, and the general characteristics of the planet. Without a series of these space missions, it would have been incredibly difficult to assess Venus' high temperatures and dense atmosphere. Today, various astronomers don't believe that the hostile planet could support life. The temperatures up there are high enough to melt lead, and water is scarce. Furthermore, due to its thick atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure on Venus is generally 90 times that of Earth. 
In any case, to overlook the USSR's contribution to the exploration of Venus would be like rewriting history. As far as the Soviets were concerned, Venus was worth investigating, even if it was just to fuel the space race. You see, exploring other, more friendly planets like Mars wasn't completely off the table. However, it was more expensive than sending probes to Venus. Everything essentially comes down to the distance from Earth to another celestial body. On average, the hostile planet is only 40 million kilometers away from our home, while Mars is, on average, 250 million kilometers away. Such huge differences in distance result in significant differences in cost. Besides, if the U.S. hadn't been the world's largest economy, it could never have explored Mars as easily. Various reports suggest that Soviet missions were risky and had significant technical gaps. Clearly, the rockets weren't prepared to cover vast distances. Likewise, the Union had a poor history of losing contact with its rockets. So it makes sense why the Soviet space program chose a more feasible and closer mission that would yield results. Anyway, if we don't consider the space race in this context, the story of the Venera missions would be incomplete. The U.S. wasn't even on the space map when the Soviet program launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This move kicked off the space race. What's more, it kept up with its energy. Anyway, what is genuinely entrancing is the justification for why the U.S. zeroed in on the moon as opposed to Venus. NASA had a progression of disappointments with its Venus missions during the 1960s, and thus, the U.S. space office hit an impasse known as the Venus Curse. Every time they sent off a test into the Venusian climate, it ended up being a failure. This was precisely when the Soviet Union saw a chance to capitalize on NASA's disappointments. At that time, both the U.S. and the Soviets were still determined to prove their superiority in the space race. The best strategy was to exploit two specific opportunities. It was a calm yet decisive move. The Soviet space program seized Earth's sister planet as their primary accomplishment in the space race, achieving something its significant rival had neglected to do. Despite the strategy's limited resources and misused government, it repeatedly sent missions to Venus to secure its victorious position against the U.S. Compared to NASA's focus on the moon, this strategic distinction wasn't without animosity. Additionally, precarious propaganda was used to obscure their critical failures with Venus. The American government was provoked to censure the USSR's fixation on the planet in the media. Venus was labeled the evil planet, while Mars became humanity's destiny. These labels didn't matter to the Soviets. Their main goal was to demonstrate their superiority over the Americans, and they succeeded. The Venera missions are almost forgotten in current history. However, despite their initial troubles, those missions were particularly refined, advanced, and ambitious, especially at the beginning of the space age. The Venera missions led the way. Recalling the 1950s, the Soviets began experimenting with the design and technical details of the probes. For the next 30 years, they continued to build and launch interplanetary spacecraft as part of the Venera program. Since the program was running alongside a very turbulent Cold War, the Soviets focused on maximizing their resources. Fortunately for them, the early years of the conflict provided them with more resources than the U.S., which turned out to be remarkably significant. It allowed them to build larger rockets designed to break through high altitudes and cover vast distances. The Soviets rushed to experiment with both manned and automated rockets while the Soviet academic community was working on a series of calculations and assessments to create precise trajectories for the Venus missions. Behind the scenes, their Mars programs were also running. For the Soviet space program, nothing was more important than developing advanced instrumentation for these probes. This led to the most significant breakthroughs in the history of space exploration. In 1966, the Soviet Union launched Venera 3, making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and successfully land on the planet's surface. This achievement heightened the competition between the two superpowers. Unlike the American missions, which were plagued by failures and dead ends, the Soviet program continued to make progress. Despite their advances, the USSR managed to send successful probes into the Venusian climate. The key issue with this approach was limited design capacity. 
the Soviets quickly overcame their design issues and launched the most sophisticated probes of the Venera program during the 1970s. Their pioneering efforts allowed them to accomplish the first simultaneous launches of Venera 4 and Venera 5. According to most historians, this was the most exciting decade in the history of space exploration. For certain, the U.S. attempted to develop similar launch designs. So, why did the Soviet office choose simultaneous launches to Venus? To understand this, you really need to realize that interplanetary travel requires advanced instrumentation to gather the highest level of data and evidence. The probe was initially launched to study the planet's surface, and that is precisely what happened with the vapor analysis since the launch went smoothly. The probe entered Venus' atmosphere successfully. The Soviet program continued with Venera 5, but this wasn't just a repeat of the first launch. The second probe was specifically designed to gather detailed information about the planet. Ultimately, the Soviets had to endure the obstacles of temperature, atmospheric pressure, and radiation on Venus. They did not have to wait too long for their answers. By the mid-1970s, the Soviet program was entering the most advanced phase of their launches. Everything the USSR had done up to that point was about progression and improvement. It was about ensuring that their designs and advancements were more modern. It was also about perfecting the methods and mechanics of interplanetary travel. For the second decade of the Venera missions, the Soviet Union aimed to conduct exploratory missions. The most remarkable and exciting launch of this period was Venera 7. As the 11th Soviet probe entered Venus' atmosphere, it became the first spacecraft to send back data from another planet. By this point, the planet's high temperatures, density, and surface pressures had already been noted. The Soviets were attempting to record Venusian sounds. The next major achievement for the program came in the mid-1980s. Venera 13 outperformed all previous interplanetary missions in terms of complexity. This probe was the first to capture panoramic images of Venus' surface. At the same time, the Soviet program launched Venera 14 to gather similar data about the planet's surface. As the Soviet Union was perhaps the first country to recognize Venus, the Russian Space Agency has renewed its ambitions for Venus missions. Venera is a forthcoming joint mission between Roscosmos and NASA to examine the atmosphere and surface of Venus. The name Venera represents Venus in Russian. It is expected to launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s and plans to study the planet's climate, geological history, and look for signs of any present or past habitability. The probe will include an orbiter, a lander, and possibly a balloon to study the planet's atmosphere in detail. The legacy of the Venera missions extends far beyond their technical achievements and global repercussions. These missions, initiated by the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War, represented a pinnacle of human imagination and determination in exploring the universe. Despite facing numerous challenges and obstacles, the Soviets persevered in their mission to uncover the mysteries of Venus, a planet long believed to be hostile and uninhabitable. One of the most significant aspects of the Venera missions was their pioneering use of robotic probes to study planetary conditions and surfaces. These missions paved the way for future exploration. 